Inside Press Box is presented by Live Casino and Hotel. Always live, always on. And welcome into the grand finale of Inside Press Box. Stan the Fan Charles here with my co-host Gary Stein. And Gary, we've saved our best for last. No doubt about it. We're going to send off the show in style, my friend. Here we go on the final time. Baltimore Polytechnic Institute Wrestling is competing for glory on and off the mat. Poly head coach Wavy Gibson III looks back on his National Wrestling Hall of Fame career and previews the road ahead for his engineers. And later in the show, Stan and I reflect on the 518 episode Inside Press Box run here on WMAR2. Join us as we look back on the impact of Inside Press Box. You look good there, Stanley. I look much younger. But first, six-time defending MAC Commonwealth champion Stevenson University Men's Lacrosse opens the 2019 season Saturday, February 16th. It's a pleasure to welcome in an old friend, Stevenson's Heads Men's Lacrosse Coach, Paul Canabene. I almost did it again. <laughs> Paul, thanks. Great to see you again. Well, Greg, thanks for having me. Congratulations to you guys for Thank such you. a great run and a tremendous successful show. I'm happy to be here. Hey, you, you've you been now at Stevenson. You're embarking on your 15th season. So when you were first <laughs> on our show, you'd probably been three or four years into your run there. Yeah. Uh, put it into perspective. Is that job gone as exactly as you hoped it would go? Uh, it's gone beyond that. I think really when I first started at Stevenson, you know, I had a, a walkie-talkie as a trainer, a slanted room. My uh, AD was picking up rocks out of our practice field. It was a slanted field, and we just had the Green Spring campus. And uh, so we've gone now from, you know, bringing your own chair to games to a great stadium. Didn't have a locker room. We used to use the garage as our locker room. Uh, so we went really gone full circle here with all this. And I never thought when I first got there that I'd be there 15 years. I thought I'd be there six, uh, six months, and then I'd be on to the next job. But it's Really turned out to be a great place because Stevenson really treats people so well, and uh, you know, be there 15 years and to be where you are now and to accomplish what our programs accomplished. I think if you look back to everything we had to overcome, is a true miracle because nobody would have thought the program I took over with only 17 guys in the team in our first team meeting would be able to win a national championship, be able to go 10 straight NCAA tournaments. We have 80 All-Americans when they never even had a tough time getting all conference guys at that time. You know, I want to talk about that stadium real, real quick, Paul. And we talked about it before the show tonight. I live not too far from the. Stadium. Stadium. And I remember when it used to be the old Colts facility, yeah. the old Ravens facility, and, yeah. that, and that was fine. But there wasn't a lot of activity. There wasn't a lot of traffic there. When Villa Julie basically moved to Stevenson on yeah. Owings Mills Boulevard and made that a place to be, there's so much activity. Your stadium has to be one of the best D3 stadiums in the country, maybe the best as far as the sport is well, concerned. Well, we definitely are really happy about how it turned out, you know, and I think it turned out to be one of the better places to be in the country to come play. That's why we play so many home games every year. That's why Tusk comes to us every year because of the atmosphere and, the, and the, what that brings to us. And that stadium has helped us bring in so many great recruits, but it also legitimized what we were at Stevenson, and not just for the lacrosse program, but the football programs and the basketball programs. Everybody really gave us a mark now. When people drive by, they go, wow, look at this. Look what Stevenson does. And now to have victory there, President Manning got the statue there and everything. We've really added on all the touches to make it a really first-class venue. And uh, a lot of people went into making that with Tim Campbell and Brett Adams and President Manning were there at that time. They did so much to get that done, uh, but it's turned out to be really a great recruiting thing for us because you come and play in Mustang Stadium and uh, when the lights are the brightest at night it's really unbelievable. Yep. Normally when we have you on the show we always talk about Stevenson lacrosse and I haven't asked you a lot of questions about your career as a player yep. but I in my time researching you and all that years ago I found out you were considered arguably maybe the best face-off guy <laughs> that has ever played D1 lacrosse. Uh, well, I got. You know, Are you close at least? Well, you know, I got lucky a few times. I like to say, you know what I mean. But I think, in you know, I really kind of prospered. I wouldn't say in Division One when I played in college. You know, I think my senior year I really blossomed. Had an unbelievable year. Uh, before that, I, I I was trying to figure out life as most college kids were. I really bloomed right after college in my senior year, going through the pros, and I was able to play to us 36 year old, 36 years old, and mm -hmm. playing the MLL and the NLL, and you know, a lot of club ball. Everybody forgets that about Mount Washington and the Green Turtle. Everybody forgets about all those teams and. and really had a, a very successful run at uh, facing off. I'd like to say I'm um, probably in the in the argument, uh, but you know I don't think anybody can really say with face off guys who's the best one because we can beat each other in any given day. Does that give you the fact that you understand the leverage involved in that? Does that give you an ability to teach something that then helps your team 
really have an edge? Well, I think we've done very well at that position. You know, we've been able to coach a lot of great guys that have come through our place. Ray Whitty, um, Brent Hyken, you know, all guys that have played in the pros at times and really help us give us an edge to do that. We've been very successful. We had a great kid lat for the last few years and we think we have a couple kids this year that are going to be outstanding. So it does give us a little bit of an edge, I think, to be to understand what's going to happen and actually help kids figure out that's not two guys just facing off. There's actually a skill to it and a thinking that goes behind it. You've been in the MAC Commonwealth now for six years. Yep. You um, <laughs> won, a, won an NCAA championship in 2013. Your regular season record in the MAC is 48 and 0. Okay, we like that, and that's very good, right? <laughs> it's actually probably close to perfect, right? Yep. Uh, but the question is, how do you coach with that? Well, I think that the way we go about our season is that we want to play the best to be the best, and so our regular season that we leading up to our conference play, you know, we play pretty much seven of the top ten teams in the country each and every year, and that really gives us the mentality going into conference play to get our team ready to play a certain way every day, because that's what I believe in. You know, I believe you can only play one way, and you can't turn it on and off, so you got to bring it every day, and we encourage our kids to do that by playing the best teams. We've won enough regular season games. We can be 25-0 and 0 every year if we wanted to be going into the playoffs, but we really try to play the best teams to get ourselves situated for our conference tournament and to be successful in the NCAA tournament, and it's been fairly successful over the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. We've got about 30 seconds, Paul, so last question. I asked you how your team is shaping up this year. Yeah. You said, I'm, I'm healthy yeah. on the defensive it's side of nice things. nice to be healthy. You had about eight injuries to your defense well, we lost five year? of our top six guys last year in the defensive end in the first four games of the year. And when you lose a guy like Don DeFazio, who was the year before an All-American in the Conference Defensive Player of the Year, out for the year we have him back. Dylan Harris, who broke his ankles, one of the best takeaway guys in the country to do that. Joey Cannon, another guy who's played, I think, 40 games for us started. He's back to do that. And then we got the other two guys back. So it really helps us give us more experience. And then we have the guys who had to step in last year, Drew Costco, who played so well, had to step in to be a starter. We have the freshmen who had to step in. Now they can kind of play for us, so we have a little more experience. So now we went from last year having like three guys healthy, now we have about six or seven guys we can really rely on. So that's only helped us this year. That's why we're so excited. Let's awesome. keep them healthy. Thank All you. Right. Thanks for having me, guys. It's been great. So proud. Such a good of friend of the show. We right. appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having me. Always been good to us. Paul Canda Benning. After the break, Polly Head Varsity Wrestling Coach Wavy Gibson and his observation on this year's squad. Stay with us for the rest of the grand finale of Inside Press Box. And Hero Appreciation Day is every Wednesday at Live Casino and Hotel. Live rewards members with a valid military DOD police officer or firefighter ID receive special offers. Visit LiveCasinoHotel.com for details. At Arundel Mills, must be 21. Please play responsibly. For help, call 1-800-GAMBLER. And looking for a great deal on clothing or hard-to-find collectibles? Goodwill has it all with low prices on thousands of items. Their inventory changes daily, so you never know what you're going to find. Visit GiveToGoodwill.org. Inside Press Box is presented by Live Casino and Hotel. Always live, always on. Inside Press Box is presented by Live Casino and Hotel. Always live, always on. Do you know a high school team that makes an impact in the community? Nominate them for the Green Turtle Team of the Month. Just send an email to tgtteam at countysportszone.com. Press box, County Sports Zone, and the Green Turtle will select a winner each and every month. Glen Burnie Transmissions provides factory remanufactured transmissions for hundreds less than the dealer. Suspect you have a transmission issue? Stop by for a complimentary road test and scan. You can easily get an estimate on your transmission repair by going to their website, gbt-online.com, or call 410-766-8500. And welcome back to Inside Press Box. Our next guest is a member of the Maryland chapter of the National Wrestling Hall of Fame. That's right. A state champion in his high school days and an MSA champion as a head coach. He's led Polly's varsity program since 1999. It's a pleasure to welcome in Wavy Gibson. And actually, it's Wavy Gibson the yes. third, right? So are, were the first and second also wrestlers? No. Well, um, no. My father um, played football and ran track. My son, Wavy Gibson the fourth, he wrestled. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you look like you can still do it, by the way. Every once in a while for about 20 <laughs> seconds. Right. <laughs> And you, know, and, you know, I wonder about that because when I think most people think about wrestling, the first thing they think about is, you know, the WWE and yes. what they see on Monday Night and Monday Night Raw and all that. And maybe the fundamentals of wrestling right. is still the same, but what you teach, what you offer is something completely different. Correct. Um, we deal with what they call a folk style wrestling um, or collegiate style wrestling, and it's just an entry-level wrestling 
here that we do in, in high school in the States. Eventually, hopefully our kids will graduate to freestyle or incorporate some freestyle or Greco-Roman um, within their styles to compete at a higher level. Now, you've been at Poly now since 1999. Correct. Prior to that, you were the head coach at Walbrook and you won your MSA championship there in 1987. Correct. Compare working at the two schools. Well, um, Walbrook was my first um, teaching assignment, right. so that's all I knew, so it was the latest and greatest thing. And um, we had some great kids there, um, some of those kids I'm still in contact with. It was a neighborhood school, um, just a regular zone school, but we had um, a lot of success. I had some talented kids who were willing to work hard um, in spite of some of their situations, and um, they were just great kids. Do you find that kids that wrestle are really motivated, highly motivated kids. Is that kind of, is that a component that drives them toward wrestling? Absolutely, absolutely. Because it takes a, a, a certain type of moxie to be able to stand on your own um, on the mat with no timeouts, no substitutes. Um, if you lose, it's all your fault. If you win, great, it's all your fault. Um, so it takes a special kind of um, athlete to do that. And this may be the same type of question, but phrased a little differently. Stan and I were actually having a conversation before we came in tonight. And that was, he asked me, did you ever wrestle? Right. You know, and I said, no, I've never been an individual sport kind of guy. Baseball, football, basketball, team sports, the camaraderie, etc. Not that you don't have a wrestling team, because you right. do. But when you're on the mat, you're all alone. My question to you is, is that a different athlete? Is that a different mentality for an individual sport player as opposed to a team sport player? It certainly can be, and a lot of your um, more successful wrestlers, I look back um, at some of my wrestlers at Walbrook um, who were very successful, um, Jamil Stokely, George Chandler, to name a few. Uh, they were only children, so they weren't used to having others around. They participated in some sports that were team sports, but they excelled at wrestling. Same thing here at Poly. Um, there were a number of students that I had. I had Matthew Oakley, uh, Mervyn Crawford, who was a twin, but still trying to find his own identity. Mm -hmm. um, so they kind of stand alone. Now, I got to meet you about six, seven weeks ago when Pressbox uh, chose Mervyn Thomas Crawford right. to be our unsung hero of the, of the month. Uh, Masonic Charity sponsors that uh, particular uh, award ceremony. Uh, tell us a little bit about him. I don't want to single him out over everybody else, but he's the one wrestler I met and he seemed like he really had it all together. Right. Well, first of all, thank you for recognizing yep. him um, with that award. Um, Mervyn is a great kid. He he's, he's has a great face um, for the public. He's academically sound. Um, he's a personable kid. He's a sponge. He soaks up everything. Um, as you mentioned, when you met him the first time, when he first came to us in the ninth grade, he had some skills, but um, he had to get the chip off of his shoulder and uh, make some adjustments. Um, so he's done great. He's, um, he's a three-sport varsity athlete, and I look forward to hearing um, great things from him. Hopefully, keep our fingers crossed, um, last year he placed fifth in the state. We're shooting for number one. Um, that's all he's talking about. He's undefeated so far this year. Mm -hmm. You know, I know a little bit about Polly just from the past, and a lot of Polly wrestlers end up playing football for the school as well, especially D and offensive linemen. But my question is just the opposite. Do, do, you, do football players have the skills to wrestle? That's always a and tough... we've got about 30 seconds. Okay. Yeah. That's always a tough question. Um, a lot of the guys who come from the football team, um, they think they're in think, shape. Right, yeah. And, and they're ready to translate what they've done on the field onto the mat. It's a different world. Mm. It's a different world. Um, but yeah, we do all right. Wavy, I you reached my hand do. out, man. I Thank met you, you six, seven weeks ago. I never thought it would be the last guest on the show. But as time was uh, working toward this, I knew you'd be perfect. Good but stuff. thank you for having me and um, for recognizing Polly and, and letting Mervyn shine. All right. Thank you. Wavy Gibson the third. After the break, we'll talk Super Bowl 53, John Harbaugh, Eric DaCosta, and take a look back on a legacy of Inside Press Box. Stay with us as we inch closer to our big sign-off. Inside Press Box is presented by Live Casino and Hotel. Always live, always on. Inside Press Box is presented by Live Casino and Hotel. Always live, always on. 
And Inside Press Box is sponsored by Citron Restaurant, a gorgeous lakeside dining and event spot with seasonal American menus of fresh seafood, pastas, and grilled steaks and chops. CitronBaltimore.com. Do you know a high school student athlete who impacts both their team and community? Nominate them for the U.S. Army Impact Player of the Month Award today. Visit PressBoxOnline.com slash impact. And welcome back to Inside Press Box. As we mentioned earlier, after 518 episodes here on WMAR2, Inside Press Box is ending. For one last time, Stan the Fan and I are going to do a little round of crosstalk. And crosstalk will include some talk about the Ravens. John Harbaugh signed to a new four-year contract. Your thoughts? Well, you know that I wasn't in favor of bringing John back. But as the team went from four and five to, to their run to, to win the, the division and uh, get into the playoffs, it became more likely that John Harbaugh was going to come back. I know you're a big fan of John's and respect the job he's done. I... Um, I'm not saying I'm wrong on John Harbaugh, but look, he's going to be here the next four years. I'm rooting for him to be as successful as possible. Well, then I'm going to say it. You're wrong on John Harbaugh. <laughs> he's one of the five best, co maybe seven best coaches in the NFL. He would have had a job lined up immediately when he left. Never said he wouldn't. I know your point about the message being stale and all that. I get it. I'm, I'm a supporter of John. Eric DaCosta, you weren't there at the press conference I was. What uh, do you think about it? I think this is going to be great. I think Eric, it, what I'm interested about with Eric is to find out how much he spends on skill position players. You know, he knows how to do it from Ozzie Newsom. He learned at his, at his lap here for the last 10 or 12 years, whatever it was. But, you know, Ozzie spent on defense, and I'm not saying Eric won't. It's going to be interesting to me to see how much money and how much draft capital they spend on receivers especially and skill position players in general. The one impression I had from being at the press conference talking to him on the dais and off to the side in the media scrum is this is a guy who believes, you know, football is in its infancy with analytics. And I think Eric DaCosta, that's where he's going to carve out his niche that's different than Ozzie's. He thinks that the game is ready to explode with analytical, the use of analytical information for play calling, and I think he's on to something. Well, I there. think that goes to my point. Yeah. Analytics is all about offensive football at this yep. point, and that's what's going to happen. All right, Super Sunday, 6.30 tonight, Rams and Patriots. Well, the Patriots are two-and-a-half point favored. Uh, the Rams were favored when it came out of the gate that this was going to be the game. It quickly moved to the, uh, the Patriots being favored by two-and-a-half. I'm a little surprised that it stayed that low. I like the Rams. Everybody's talking about Belichick and his staff having the extra week. I think Sean McVay and uh, Wade Phillips have an extra week to devise something to put some pressure and pound on Mr. Tom Brady. So I'm not a better, but you say it's two and a half. Yeah. I say the Patriots cover. Patriots win by three of field goal late. All right. I like the Rams to win the football game by about six or seven points. All right. All right this is our final show, and Gary. You probably worked the last 150, 160 shows. I don't have that down to a science or anything like that. Uh, it's been one of the best partnerships I've ever had in my media career. I've loved working with you. Uh, and I think we've brought an entertaining and informative brand of sports talk uh, to the airwaves over these 518 shows. I just think that the Baltimore sports culture is so uh, great. I mean, we're, sports are embedded in, in, in who we are. And, you know, it's just impossible for media to cover all the things that are going on. And I think that's one of the things that drew me to this show. You know, no, we don't have the Orioles and Ravens it people on the all paycheck. the time. It wasn't the huge it paycheck. It certainly wasn't the paycheck. But all the stories, the high school athletes, the local college athletes, the charitable endeavors, how sports is just interwoven into the fabric of our society and who we are, that's what you brought. And that's what I wanted to be a part of. And that's what I've been proud to be a part of for the last five years. And we're we're going to take a look at some things with the Costas in photo of the week in a second, but I do want to thank Kevin Heights, our first producer oh, way yeah. back, way back, 10 and a half years ago, Dave Lashley, who stepped in, Derek Watte, and most recently Matt Stovall. But we'll be back, and you can keep it here for one last Costas in photo of the week. Inside Press Box will return after this. Royal Farms, world famous chicken, has been ranked number one in Food and Wine magazine. Royal Farms, real fresh, real fast. Inside Press Box is presented by Live Casino and Hotel. Always live, always on.
Inside Press Box is presented by Live Casino and Hotel. Always live, always on. And welcome back into the show one last time. It's now time for the photo of the week. And as always, photo of the week is brought to you by our friends at Costas Inn, where they have nightly specials Monday through Friday. Check them out at CostasIn.com. Stanley, this week's photo is a sentimental one with episode number 518 nearing its conclusion. Here's a look at the faces who helped make it happen. A sincere thank you to the hardworking technical crew here at WMAR. Thank you for 10 great years of Inside Press Box. All right. It's been quite a run, Gary Stein. And again, the man. you are the man as well. Uh, we hope we've uh, entertained and informed and brought some interesting things to light over these 10 plus years. 518 episodes. That's pretty wild. <laughs> All right, that's going to do it. We invite you to keep up with Gary and I at PressBoxOnline.com. And you can connect with Gary Stein's production facility at Studio83.com. Special thank you to Paul Canabeni and Wavy Gibson. It's been our pleasure to help tell the stories of countless teams and people from this beautiful city once a week, every week, for the last 10 years plus. Although the TV show is ending, Pressbox marches on in social media, in print, and online. With that, for my good friend Gary Stein, this is Stan the Van Charles signing off and saying, Have, have a, a great, great sports, sports week, week ahead. ahead.